sell marijuana to all adult Oregonians as soon as possible. Because the whole idea of legalization is to eventually have the black market, the unregulated, untaxed market, move into legitimacy and legalize the people that are a part of it. And so uh, Senator Ferrioli pushed that idea. The Implementing Measure 91 committee talked about it extensively. And at the end of the day, all 10 members of that committee voted to allow October 1st sales of marijuana. That includes our senator, Republican Jeff Cruz. It includes Representative Andy Olson from the Albany area, who's an ex-police officer, and all the members of the committee. The, uh, the bill then passed the legislature, and it allows uh, cities to opt out. And that's what Roseburg is considering today. If they do nothing, on October 1st, any adult over 21 who can go into any of the five dispensaries that already exist in Roseburg that are regulated by the Oregon Health Authority uh, marijuana. Yeah. If you store on October 1st, you're going to be able to buy plants and up to a quarter ounce of marijuana flour. Yeah, cool. You wouldn't be able to buy edibles and tinctures, extracts, and all those other things until the OLC regulations come online early next year. Uh, but basically, what's on the agenda of the Roseburg City Council today is they have an ordinance that would prohibit that from happening here in town. And uh, I'm John Sajo, the director of the Umpqua Cannabis Association. Uh, we're opposed to that. We think that the early sales are an excellent idea. Yes. Uh, we agree with Senator Ferrioli on that. It'll be good for the five dispensaries in town. It'll be good for their employees. It'll be good for the city. I mean, the city, for one thing, gets $100 extra for every employee at a medical marijuana dispensary. When they regulated medical marijuana last year, that's one of the rules they put in. They, they act like they've forgotten that the medical marijuana stores already are subject to more rules than any other business in town. There's no other business where your employees have to get a, a special license to be able to work here. But every, dispens every dispensary employee gets a special uh, license that costs $100. So the city will, will benefit immediately from the extra employees. Uh, you know, there's a lot of other good reasons. You know, if you're an adult and you live in Douglas County, and the state of Oregon voted to legalize marijuana, and, you know, yeah, you can have your four plants, but a lot of people don't have a green thumb or live in an apartment. And adults in Roseburg or in Douglas County should have the right to go to a store here in town to yeah. buy marijuana and use it responsibly at home. Yeah. The state law allowed. You know, anything yeah. less, you will be treated as second class citizens. And we're not going to have it. So uh, that's why we're here. And, you know, there's a lot of good arguments. I'll touch on a few others. You know, at 7 o'clock, the city council meeting is going to start. We're going to go in there. We're going to be calm and polite. Uh, but we're going to provide testimony to them to change their minds on this and allow the early sales. Uh, besides, uh, you know, our, our civil right to be able to shop here, you know, there's the economics of that. How is it a good policy for the city of Roseburg to draft an ordinance that's going to force consumers here to drive up to Eugene to shop? I don't know how many millions of dollars they will spend in Eugene instead of Roseburg. I don't know how much money they'll have to spend on gas to make that trip up there. You know, I don't know if they're going to buy their groceries up there instead of in Roseburg when we're up there. But all that stuff is bad for Roseburg and bad for us. Yeah. There's no reason to do it. Another point that I'm going to make to the city council is, you know, we, we live, you know, our society is governed by the rule of law. And... You know, with every other issue, with every other subject matter, the local governments don't necessarily challenge the state law or want to have an exemption to it. You know, I don't see Roseburg asking to have a different minimum wage, you know, or, or a different, you know, set of uh, penalties for different things. And we should follow the state law on this. And the citizens here should have the same rights as everybody else. If the city you know, wants to deviate from the state, they should really have a compelling reason for doing so. Our city council does not have a compelling reason. They're just afraid of the unknown. You know, they don't come from the marijuana culture. They don't understand it. <laughs> People are afraid of what they don't understand. Right. But we cannot let their fear hold this area back. Some of the other things that they need to understand is this is a tremendous economic issue. You know, 
know, our estimates is that for the county, and I'll talk about the county in a minute, they've already banned marijuana stores, marijuana farms, marijuana processors, marijuana distributors, you know, and that's going to cost this county hundreds of millions of dollars, thousands of potential jobs, you know, money that we need to reopen road school or keep the library open more than it is or have after school programs for our kids. You know, yeah, we have a lot of problems in our community, and they all need money to be solved. We have a new source of money for this community. To say no to it because you're afraid of the unknown is not acceptable. We need to let our elected officials know that. Today, we're going to take that message to City Hall. Yeah. But over the next 15 months, we need to take that same message to our county commissioners. On July 15th, you know, barely out of the starting gate, the legislature adjourned in early July when they passed House Bill 3400. It's unfortunate, did a lot of good things. It improved on ballot measure 91 in many ways. They made the taxes better, did a lot of good things. But the one thing about that law that I didn't like was that they let the local governments opt out. They gave them 180 days to do so. Douglas County became the first county in the state of Oregon to ban all OLCC licenses. Whoa. They did it with an emergency measure. I couldn't even be there because I was up in Portland at an OLCC Rules Advisory Committee meeting where I volunteer my time to help make sure the OLCC drafts good rules that make marijuana work here. There was no emergency. They could have taken the full six months and heard from the community, heard from the concerns of people that have fears and come to solutions that work for everybody. But they didn't do that with barely any public testimony and with none of the kind of detailed, long look at this issue like the legislature did. You know, and just to put it in context, the legislature had two hearings in front of the Implementing Measure 91 Committee every week, two hours long. They had a lot of little workers from the side. Hundreds and hundreds of people testified. Experts from all over the world participated. Lots of businesses that want to open in Oregon talk. You know, there was even an ex-DEH who was the head of a company called Privateer Holdings that has $100 million in investment capital that wants to come into Oregon, and on and on. And the legislature considered every aspect of marijuana, from the packaging, the testing, the wholesaling, you know, advertising. You know, they talked about this stuff. And the OLCC is continuing that process. They brought all the stakeholders in. You know, the police were there giving their input. You know, and after that, at the end of that process, the Measure 9 com 91 Committee, which included Democrats and Republicans from all over the state, they voted unanimously on all the changes they made to the marijuana law, including Senator Cruz. And in contrast to that process, our county commissioners had one quick meeting that most of us didn't know about and voted to ban everything about marijuana, including marijuana farms and on and on. Judging from the rules that the OLCC is going to come up with for marijuana farms, they're going to have pretty big limits. It looks like they're going to have be able to grow anywhere from 10,000 to up to 50 or 60,000 square feet of budding plants at a time. You know, a marijuana farm is going to be able to do pretty well. I think under those limits, a good farmer could make could, could produce a few million dollars worth of marijuana. And there could be a hundred of those farms in this county easily, because there's already hundreds of people growing medical yeah. marijuana and legally selling it to dispensaries. Yeah. You know, if you do the math, a hundred farms doing a million dollars, it's a hundred million dollars that could come into this county that may or may not because of what the county commissioners did. A hundred million dollars. You know, I mean, that's got to be easily a hundred million dollars. Easily, conservatively, a hundred million dollars. Not Douglas County. And the Farm Bureau and the people that sell wheelbarrows and shovels and tractors and on and on. You know, people are going to be buying trucks. People are going to be paying the mechanic to fix their trucks. People are going to be going out to local restaurants at the end of the day. You know, this is a county that needs to find a new economic base. Timber's dying. We need a replacement. We have timber. We need to keep cutting timber. We, you know, we all like to make things out of wood, but it can't carry this county in alone not anymore. Like it did. You know, we need Douglas County to be, county to be the, the, the capital of weed and the capital of wood. You know? <laughs> we can have two pillars that hold up our economy, Thanks. and we can make this area wealthy and prosperous. We can have the money to solve our social problems. And so this is what we need to do. You know, the county commissioners banned it. What 
House Bill 3400 does is it automatically puts it on the vote November of 2016. They put us in a 15-month election campaign that started the day that they banned marijuana. And some of them are a little upset that we're out there saying that, you know, they're promoting the black market. But that's exactly what they're doing. And it's exactly what Roseburg City Council gets to consider today. Because now it's legal for any adult to have marijuana. You can have eight ounces at home. You can have an ounce in, out here or in private on your person. You can share up to an ounce with each other. Yeah. You can grow four plants. The only thing that they're stopping is that we can't buy it locally. We can't grow it locally. You know, it's a recipe for disaster. If adults here can't buy it here legally, what are they going to do? I think they have two choices. They go to Eugene and buy it legally, but they buy it illegally here. And how can that be better than having people legally able to buy it at the stores? And I'm not here to vilify the black market because it's a lot of different things. But some of what it is, is not good. You know, the black market could be the little old lady that lives next door that has a few marijuana plants in her garden and has more than she can use herself. So, you know, yeah, she'll sell you a little bit. And that's not really so bad for a community if it's how she <laughs> But the black market can also be, you know, the Mexican cartels or a biker gang or organized criminal activity. You know, people with guns, people that cut off heads when they don't like the way you're, you know, things work out. We don't want that. You know, we want regulated marijuana sales. You know, we have the right to be able to go to a store and have a hundred different choices of what kind of marijuana you buy, not just the three or four choices that your dealer might have. Yeah. 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 Legalization is better for everybody. It's better for the consumer. It's better for the farmer. And it's better for the parents that are worried about their children because you can raise the money to keep the schools open. Yeah. It's fun Makes program. Sense. You know, marijuana is going to be what funds drug treatment to help the meth addicts around here so they quit stealing the bridges. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or the radio dough. <laughs> yeah. You need to challenge our local officials. Thank you for president. <laughs> you know, oh, don't want no. marijuana to be the money that solves our problems. Where are they going to get stuff? Yeah, yeah. All they can take up to do is cut down trees that haven't even grown yet. You know, we're cutting down all the trees we can. We need to have other money in this in this area. Bus. Cannabis is the answer. So anyway, thank you all for coming. Thank those of you who want to testify. Can I, just to give me an idea, because one of the things we'd like to do is kind of organize our testimony a little bit. The city councilors have asked that when we're presenting testimony that we not be too repetitive. So. Uh, <laughs> Who, who is here that may want to testify in front of the city council? All right, well, why don't we all gather, you know, over here, <laughs> finish talking, and let's kind of uh, compare notes a little bit and make sure that we cover all the points that we don't cover. And to the rest of you, uh, thank you for coming. Let me tell you about a few other things that we're doing. One is our Green Ribbon campaign. We started this at the county fair. These green ribbons mean you support cannabis in the Umpqua Valley. And we're going to keep wearing them and keep giving them away to show the rest of our community that we're here, we're not going away, regulation <laughs> works, <laughs> prohibition fails. Quit trying to ban them. Let us live. Let us work. We want to work hard, you know? You know, we will, we will, we will, we will prove that all the stereotypes about marijuana are a lie. You know, we really have... You know, a strange thing here where there's a bunch of us who want to work hard and contribute and pay taxes, and they want to ban us because, well, we might be lazy. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming to City Hall tonight because it does make a difference. Yeah. You know, we already we know we're going to vote on November on the county ban unless we can change their mind sooner, and I hope we can do that. I hope some of you will go speak to them. They meet every Wednesday right in that room there. <laughs> every Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock. We need somebody there every Wednesday to tell them. A whole bunch Reverse of your ban on marijuana commerce. <laughs> and if we tell them enough, we may change their minds. <laughs> and if we don't change their minds, we'll change their occupation because they don't deserve to be right. out there. Amen. <laughs> Another way you can help us is by joining the Umpqua Cannabis Association. We just got our PayPal link up on our website. 
We have a Facebook presence, so uh, go there, join. We need uh, we need your membership. We need your help. We need your money. <laughs> I need Just remember, money. we are in a 15-month election campaign. That's right. Yeah. So register to vote if you're not registered. Tell your friends and neighbors to register to vote. Tell them this issue's going to be on the ballot, and we're going to win it. Make sure your address is <laughs> So we also uh, have meetings regularly here in town. Uh, right now we're meeting over at the corner of uh, Mosher and Mill. And uh, look to our website or the Facebook page for when our next public meeting is. Uh, there's all kinds of things coming up that we're going to be working on, and we want your involvement. So uh, we'll have all kinds of classes. Play. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great idea. Is there anybody from Sutherland here? All right, well, I would say maybe why don't you do that from Sutherland? Uh, gather over with Willie here. And maybe instead of talking to the Roseburg City Council tonight, you all ought to go talk to the Ro uh, Sutherland City Council. Because they're doing the same thing. And we need to have a presence in all 15 cities in Douglas County. So, if any of you are up for that, it would be a good idea because it looks like we got more people than will fit in City Hall here. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, Willie, why don't you come over here so people can sell them, <laughs> people can pull them and find you. And uh, if you're from any of the other cities in Douglas County, I don't know them all, Princeton and Reedsport and Camas Valley and I think Elkton City. Elkton uh, City. We need, we need a contact in every city because the League of Cities is basically encouraging the cities to do this. They're giving them, you know, notes and sample ordinances and kind of setting the stage as though it's what the volunteer city councilors should do. And the way we counteract that is to show up. My old friend Lindsey Bradshaw used to tell me that 90% of politics is just showing up. So when your city is talking about whether to ban us, please show up. Please tell us about it. We'll show up too. And one by one, because I know some of these cities have already done some of this, one by one, we'll turn them around. We'll get them to change their ordinance, ordinance is banning marijuana, or we'll vote them out. You know, we'll recruit candidates from among you. So. I don't know if you all thought about it yet, but guess what? We're going to need some of you to step up because we're going to need elected officials in this county to recognize the best future for Douglas County as a vibrant, active, well-regulated economy in cannabis. Adults should be able to buy what they enjoy. We should grow hemp here. You know, it can help us replace wood. It's the best fiber on earth. We need to take advantage of all this. And the way we're going to do that is be politically involved. So at the city level, at the county level, we already got the state level taken care of. But here we are. So thank you for coming. Thank you for talking to your city councils tonight. And thank you for working with the Unpark Cannabis Association to make all this better. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank there's, a, there's another important thing. I get up at these meetings and talk. John Stangio gets up at these meetings and talks. Nathan gets up. Other people get up. They need to hear from more than just us. They need to hear from common citizens. They need to hear from business owners and people that are, that are in our community that this is not reasonable, it's not practical, and, and, the, and these issues that, that John's bringing up are really complicated.